This is why you should never look through someone else's things. Once there was a girl named Ryoko who had a really weird roommate in college, but when she tried to look through her things, she found something that terrified her. Ryoko's roommate was named Yuki, and Yuki was someone who always kept to herself. She didn't speak much and she rarely left the room. But after living with her for a while, Ryoko realized that Yuki would always sneak out in the middle of the night and not come back for a really long time. This made Ryoko really curious and maybe just a little bit suspicious. So one day Ryoko decided to follow her. She pretended to be asleep and waited until Yuki left. Then Ryoko waited a few more minutes and followed Yuki, always staying in the shadows to not be noticed. After about 30 minutes, they ended up at the cemetery. Ryoko watched as Yuki leaned over a grave, embracing it and laughing hysterically. This scared Ryoko so much that she ran away terrified. She came home, went to bed, and waited for Yuki to come back. But the next morning, things became even more strange. Ryoko woke up and heard that last night something unbelievable happened to her roommate, something that no one can explain. Follow for part two. This is why you should never look through someone else's things. After Ryoko followed her roommate Yuki one night to a cemetery, she found Yuki laughing hysterically over a grave. She got scared and ran home, but Yuki never came back. The next morning, Ryoko found out something terrifying. Yuki's body was found by the cemetery the next morning. She had unalived herself right after Ryoko ran away. It turns out the grave that she was sneaking out every night to go see belonged to her ex-boyfriend, and she never told anyone. Ryoko was shocked. She felt sorry for Yuki, but also thought that it was really strange. Why was Yuki laughing? A few days pass and Yuki's belongings are still in their room. It seemed like she didn't have any family or friends coming to get it either. Then she found something she never should have. Ryoko flipped through Yuki's things until she found her diary. And when she flipped to the last page, she froze. She couldn't believe what she was seeing. On the last page, written in red ink, it said, I know you saw me. If you want to tan this summer, don't do what she did. Once there was a young woman who hated how pale she was, so she came up with an idea to get the perfect tan. But she could have never known the horrifying consequences her idea would lead to. She tried to go to all the tanning salons near her, but they would only allow her to tan for 30 minutes at a time. So she booked one session and afterwards thought that she still looked really pale. That's when she came up with the idea. She would book 30 minute appointments in every tanning salon in her city back to back. She spent the next four days going from one tanning salon to another, and she finally began to see a difference. But this wasn't enough for her. Her. So she went to a store and bought a special brand of tanning lotion. This lotion was made to increase your skin sensitivity to light. She thought this would help her get the perfect tan. So she put it all over herself and let it soak. Then she made another set of tanning appointments. Later that day, the staff at the local tanning salon noticed the smell of something burning. They went to investigate and was horrified to find one of the tanning beds had caught fire. That's where the woman was found. She had literally cooked herself alive inside the tanning bed. This man thought he got away with something terrible he did as a kid, but he was wrong. Once there was a rich businessman, let's just call him Derek. Derek was walking home from work when a boy ran up to him and started pulling on his suit. He said, Mr. Give me one penny. Derek shouted, leave me alone and walked away. The boy was left outside freezing in the cold. The next day, the same boy was standing on the street and said, Mr. Give me one penny. Derek was annoyed. He threw a penny at him and said, here, there you go. Now leave me alone. But he could have never known who this boy actually was. This time when he got home, he started feeling uneasy. Something about these interactions actions felt a bit weird to him. He went to bed, tried to fall asleep, but as soon as he closed his eyes, he heard a voice right up against his ear say, Mr. Give me one penny. Derek jumped out of bed. His wife told him to calm down, so he tried to. There was no one else in the room, but something was wrong. Derek began to remember what he did. When he was a young boy, him and his friends had done something horrible. Terrified, he went up to the attic and found his old yearbook. Then, flipping through the pages, he saw a photo. Derek thought, how was this possible? He couldn't believe what he was seeing. Follow for part two. This man thought he got away with something terrible he did as a kid, but he was wrong. After Derek ignored the boy in the street asking him for one penny, he went home. But he always felt a bit strange about their interactions. Then he went into the attic and found his old yearbook. While flipping through, he found a photo. A photo that would haunt him forever. When he was younger, him and his friends were bullies, and they had done something unspeakable to a boy. After beating him, Derek and his friends threw him in the river without a second thought. The boy never showed up to class the next day, but Derek and his friends assumed that he moved away. How was it possible that the boy Derek bullied years ago was the same boy asking him for a penny in the street now. Even though Derek grew up to be a successful businessman, he held the yearbook in his hands, horrified at how his past had come back to haunt him. Within the next few days, Derek took out his life savings. He brought the bag of money out to the boy and said, here's every penny I have. Now please leave me alone. But the ghost boy just looked at him blankly. Then in an instant, his face turned into a terrifying smile. He said, no, mister, that's not all. As the ghost boy reached into Derek's chest and pulled out his heart. 
Do you know the dark origins behind the fairy tales we all grew up hearing? Okay, it's finally time to talk about Cinderella, which I've kind of been avoiding because the original Cinderella is really crazy. So we all know about Cinderella's fairy godmother, but in the original, things aren't so simple. Cinderella's mother passed away, so she plants a tree by her grave, where she goes to pray every day, until one day she finds her dress there, along with enchanted birds helping her. It's interesting because this part implies that Cinderella may have been a young witch. Another disturbing part that isn't included in the version that we all know is just how creepy the prince was because Cinderella didn't just accidentally lose her shoe. The prince covers the steps in sticky substance so Cinderella wouldn't be able to leave. He literally tried to trap her in the castle with it. And when the prince came with the shoe that she lost, Cinderella's evil stepsisters took it to the next level. Their feet were larger and couldn't fit into the shoe. So the evil stepmother ordered the sisters to cut off their toes and heal. But that wasn't all. They also got their eyes pecked out by doves. But which fairy tale should I talk about next? Follow to see the rest of the series. This is why you should never abandon your old toys. Once there was an old toy store, and on the top shelf in the back of this toy store was a doll. Every day this doll watched as people came into the store, but no one ever paid any attention to it. Until one day, its dreams came true. One girl named Lena came into the store and bought the doll. But things quickly took a terrifying turn. Although Lena liked the doll in the beginning, she quickly grew sick of it. Days and months passed, and she ended up abandoning the doll like a piece of trash. Until eventually, Lena got into a fight with her mother when she said, I never wanted the stupid doll anyways. But of course, she could have never known the terrifying consequences this would lead to. One night, as Lena slept in her bed, she heard a creaking noise. Then the noise moved closer and closer, until Lena's mother heard a scream coming from her bedroom. When she came in, she saw Lena on the ground, but it was how she looked that terrified her mother the most. Lena's arms and legs were bent in strange positions, like a disjointed doll. Her mouth was sewn shut, but she looked desperately up at her mother, then to her desk. And on her desk was a note that said, Now you know what it's like to be a doll. Do you believe in coincidences? Once something strange happened in this small Russian town. Some people thought it was just a coincidence, but others were certain that there was something more terrifying involved. There was a girl who lived with her parents at a pig farm. Let's just call her Alina. Alina's house was next to an old man who never spoke to anyone. But whenever Alina would be outside in the fields, she noticed this man staring at her. This made her feel really creeped out. But one night, things escalated into something terrifying. It was very late when Alina heard strange scratching noises on her bedroom window. She got up and turned on the light and screamed in terror. There was a huge pig banging at her window. Then from the top it tried to pull itself up and into Alina's room. Alina jumped out of bed and her parents rushed in. The pig attacked Alina and tried to bite her but Alina's father ended up striking it in the back with an axe to defend his family. Finally the pig jumped out the window and escaped into the night. But the next morning the unimaginable happened. Something no one can explain. The strange neighbor was found in the woods with an axe in his back and Alina and her family never told anyone about what happened the night before. This is why you should always tell the truth. Once a young man moved into a new apartment, and there he saw something unbelievably terrifying. Let's just call him James. When James moved in, he got in the elevator and a beautiful woman stepped in after him. They had a great conversation and got off on the same floor. Then James realized that she was his new neighbor. He was so happy about this, but he could have never imagined the horrifying events that are about to happen. He unpacked some of his things and noticed a hole in the wall. He looked through it and realized that he can see his neighbor's room. He watched as she changed and got ready for bed, and soon this became his new habit. But one night, things went from creepy to just horrifying. In the middle of the night, James heard loud groaning noises, so he looked into the hole in the wall again. There he saw his neighbor being attacked by a tall man with a dark beard, thin nose and a scar on his cheek. James saw exactly what the attacker looked like, but the next day when police came to investigate his neighbor's unfortunate passing, James said nothing. He was afraid he'd get caught for spying on his neighbor before, but he would never know what this lie would cost him. Follow for part two.